This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we're speaking to Dr. Gareth Bond about his research into human cancer genetics. Hi, Gareth. Hello. Good morning. Why doesn't everyone have the same risk of developing cancer? Um, we don't really know the answer to that question. We know there are certain families in um, that, that have a very strong familial clustering of cancer, meaning that a lot of family members have cancer. And there's been a lot of work done on those families, and indeed we've identified mutations that seem to predispose those family members of developing cancer, like in the case of Angelina Jolie, who that has recently been in the press because she's taken um, measures to prevent or decrease her risk of developing certain cancers. And um, But that's really the focus of my group is to start to look at the genetic basis of cancer in the broader population. So in those families where we don't see that strong clustering of cancer. What is an SNP? An SNP is, or as we call it, is a SNP. It's called long single nucleotide polymorphism. And those are the types of mutations that are found at a very high frequency within certain populations, uh, most all people. And, and that's the type of frequent genetic variant that we want to characterize and see how they're impacting cancer. And not just risk, but progression or response to therapy so that we can start using that genetic information that is really in you and me and the broader population for uh, to inform decisions and to ultimately improve survival. How has the field evolved in the last five or 10 years? Well, in the past 10 years, anyone who touches genetics, there's been this revolution of the, that we call genomics. And genomics is really underpinned by these wonderful chemistries that have evolved, where we can really read genomic DNA quickly and efficiently and uh, for much lower cost. And, and that has really revolutionized everything. We've been able to really go deep into the genomes of hundreds and thousands up to millions of individuals worldwide and really find out which ones are actually causing, for instance, in, in, in our case, cancer and seeing how that, that, that can affect patient outcome. Can you give an example of a SNP altering cancer risk? Well, I think the biggest one, uh, which is which is not as high frequency as I would like um, in terms of my laboratory, but is the BRCA1 mutation. Um, uh, a definition of high frequency is at least 1% in the population. And indeed, there are certain populations in, in the Western world that have such a high frequency of this breast cancer-associated mutation or BRCA, like Angelina Angelina Jolie and her family has. And, um, and that is, is such a wonderful example of people who don't have cancer yet coming into the clinic, identifying the mutation, and we can really, as, as a field, offer intervention that will ultimately prolong life and, and ameliorate suffering to a certain extent. And, and I think that's, for us, that's a, that's a poster child of, of a variant that's found in a, quite a lot of people that we can use to improve health. Why is your research important? Why should we put money into it? Well, I think, um, I think cancer is definitely an uh, 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 illness that we don't have a handle quite yet on. I mean, 50% of all cancers are curable, but that still means we have quite a long way to go. Um, and, and I think any type of biomarker or any type of marker or information that we can glean from a patient to, to, to help that is of value. And so what we're trying to do is trying to find, um, you know, use genetic markers, use, develop that Star Trek type of technology where all we have to do is take a cheek swab or a blood sample and we can get useful information. Of course, it's quite early days now, but I hope that will be the case at least in my lifetime. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, my goal is that, that it becomes translational, uh, translational um, quite quickly. Um, and of course, as a biologist, it's it's um, that's very naive thing to say. And I need a lot of help with wonderful clinicians, scientists, and clinicians here at the university to help me translate the information that we're gleaming from our computers and our lab benches to the clinic. And, and like I said, uh, the, the most utility I think we can gleam in is as biomarkers, as informing, okay, we know people are different in their risk for cancers, which ones ha actually have a higher risk, and why? Why is it? Can we intervene somehow in preventative or therapeutic strategies? 
and using that genetic information to help inform that decision. That's where we hope to translate from bench to the clinic. Thank you. Thank you.